Okay, hi. In this video, what we're going to look at is some fill-ins. Uh, now, by that I mean uh, playing some notes at the end of a section before you move into your next chord change. For example, uh, if you're moving from a G to a C chord, I'll give you a quick example. Say you have a G, four finger G, and we have down, down, up, up, down. And the next chord coming in is C. So we'd have another up and then a C chord. Instead of staying on the G for the very final strum, down, down, up, up, down, at this point what I would do would be swing the finger over and take the first note out of the C chord, hit the top three, meaning the three thinnest, and then strum the C chord. So the final change at the end of the section would be G, up, C. Now that note itself there is a chord called C slash D. So that's the kind of thing we're going to do. Uh, on the sheet you'll notice there's quite a lot of fill-ins. This sheet is focusing only on fill-ins and the links between the chords. A bit of time spent on, on this will really speed up your chord change. And a lot of people tend to focus on the actual strumming on the main bars or part of a song instead of the linking of the chords. It's that linking of the chords that helps your rhythm guitar. Um, whether it's electric guitar you're playing the chords on or uh, acoustic it helps your chords come together that bit more quickly. So there's probably uh, three or four common fill-ins. Two, two of the most common would be either to use the open strings, in most cases the top three, and on that sheet we're calling them uh, just an off, calling that just an off. And you'll notice in the other videos that I'm going to do on um, a more advanced rhythm patterns, I'm going to bring the fill-ins in as well, and it's still, those three strings will just be called an off. It actually is a mini kind of E minor chord, because those three notes make up an E minor. But we just call it an off for simplicity's sake. So that would be off. Uh, this note, this chord here, which is these three strings, fret one string two and the other two open, we're going to call C slash D. Uh, we could also have a fill-in here on string uh, 3 fret 1 which would be those 3 which is a mini kind of E chord not as common you'll see when that one will come up that'll be maybe from a D up to an E chord so on that chord sheet whether it's the Word document or the PDF there's an awful lot of chords on there and probably 4 fill-ins so if we look at probably one of the most common is the off one so say you had a chord progression was going from G to a D and your rhythm was down, down, up, up, down, up. And most people would play that down, down, up, up, down, up, pause, change. But if you add in an off on the last up, just before the D, it helps to link the two chords together. So you'd have down, down, up, up, down, up. So down, down, up, up, down, off, down. So a lot of songs would jump like that from a G to a D chord and back again. So it helps to sort of bridge the gap. The reason it works is these strings don't sound out of, out of key in between the two chords. Because if you think about it, when you're playing a G chord, if it's three finger G even, you've got these two strings ringing inside the G chord anyway. So when you move between that and D, it has to work. So you have down, off, D. So you're really strumming part of G again before you make that D shape. Likewise, when you go back, D, off, G, the notes that you're using as the fill-in chord are going to be in the next chord anyway, so it works out these two strings again. Obviously, more songs, songs are going to have more than just G and D, and I'd say we had something um, a bit more tricky would be a G chord to a C major. Now, the fill-in changes here, because we may as well carry on, carry a note over in the C chord just before we actually lay the rest of the C down. So... If the strumming was going, as the example at the start, down, down, up, up, down, we've got five strums, there should be six in this bar, because it's four beats, instead of playing the, the next one and then changing, we're going to go down, down, up, up, down, jump over, grab the first note from C, strum the top three up, lay the C, then the fingers down for C. So the link itself becomes down, up, 
So if we had a bar of down, down, up, up, down, up on a G, and then down, down, up, up, down, up on a C, what we'll have is down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. Now what happens when you move back? Well, we can't use that again because we're going back to a G chord. So that's where the off comes back in again. So going forwards, if we call it that, would be from G to C. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Let the C chord down, 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 up, up, down. Then the off, because we're going back to G, off, G. So any strumming pattern that you're doing that has an up at the end, you, you should be able to put some sort of fill in, in to link you to the next chord. So if we look at something completely different, D to E major. Now, this note here is in the E, so rather than play the whole D section, lift everything away and build the E chord back up again, what we're going to do is just strum an up at the end of the D section and lay the E down. So say we'll have D, down, down, up, up, down, slide over, up, strum the E. So leaving out the full strum, what we had there was down on the D, very last strum at the end of the D section, up, Lady E down. Now you'll notice that on your sheets, I'll have axed, I've axed out a lot of the strings you shouldn't hit. Hit so running through the fill ins again. We've got the top three open. That would be the off. C slash D chord is the top three again. This note here would be a G sharp because that's the note we're playing. G G sharp. We can't hit six. It sounds awful. So we're going to strum the top three. So when you're on the D down. This works for all the other chords. Basically the rule would be, the general rule would be, as G and C are an awful lot of things, an awful lot of songs, um, if there's no C chord coming next, it's an off. Lads with everything, you get you get exceptions. If you had something like G to this shape here called C I 9, which should be on the sheet, what we could do to link it would be to use these two strings. So if we again had down, down, up, up, down, the fill in there would be up, that's the end of the G section finished, then fin strum your C section. Down, down, up, up, down. So go through that again, we've got down, down, up, up, down. Use the link. Up, down, down, up, up, down. So it's really worthwhile when you're working on this sheet to spend a lot of time going down, up, down. Because at the end of the day, the fill-ins and the links between the chords are what ties the whole thing. That's the glue that holds it all together. If you don't have um, smooth chord changes, everything's going to sound very disjointed like this. Down, down, up, up, down, up. The fingers change. Down. Or D to E would be down, down, up, up, down, up. Wait for the fingers to change. Down. Or taking on some completely different chords, say it was D to A to G. Nothing common between the D and the A. There's your A major. Nothing common between the A and the G. So we would have an off at the end of the D, an off at the end of the A, and then on the G chords we would have down, down, up, up, down, off, A, off, G. So rather than strumming every strum in the, on each bar, Work on the fill-ins would be down, off, A, off, G. It's quite a lot of work there, moving fingers, completely different chords. But you can you can use this same idea uh, on all songs in the future that you use. It's a really good idea. And in lessons here with me, I would definitely be bringing this in and spend a lot of time getting people to work through uh, these fill-ins and linking chords together. Uh, there's nothing worse than something that sounds really disjointed. Uh, so say we had a more complicated change, uh, I'll give you some example, it would be something like Green Day's Time of Your Life. A simple rhythm for it would be on the verses, you've got the chords of G, C odd 9, and D. This is actually going to be in another video, we're going to put this together, but quickly run through it, it would be down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. Now comes the link, down on the C odd 9, down, down, up. Up, down. I've got to go to D, so what we're going to do is strum it off. Top three open, keep your fingers low, 
fall into the D, down, down, up, up, down. Now if we were going back to that G again and again we'd have an off, back on the G. So that probably seems pretty complicated. Uh, just focus on the fill-in sheet, working from chord to chord. There's, there's quite a lot of chords on it. So run it through the fill-ins again. The off was the top three on an up. We'll call that, it's kind of like a mini E minor. We've got the C slash D chord, which is the top three here. More unusual ones would probably be this G sharp one, if, if your chord chains happen to be D to E. So you'd have down, up, three again. Try not to hit any more than that. And then down on the E chord. Or if you had chords that had common notes in them, some chords share the same notes, like G and the C add nine. Shares this. So with this chord on its own would be called a G5. So in that case, we'd be down on the G, up on the fill in, down on the C add nine. So we're going down, keep those two fingers down, up, shift those down. And in a case like that, the lower you keep your fingers, the quicker you get the next chord. So when it's, if it was played really fast, down, fill in, chord, chord, fill in, chord, chord, fill in, chord. And that's the idea. So when it comes to playing songs, a lot of time spent on doing fill-ins between the chords will really speed up how quickly you learn songs. Okay, don't forget to check out the other two strumming videos. Uh, one using that down, down, up, up, down, up rhythm. And the final strumming one will have a lot of examples of songs uh, from Oasis, R.E.M., Bob Dylan, all different things. So make sure you check those out. And again, there's going to be free downloads of Word, either Word documents or PDFs with each video. Okay, I hope you find this useful and as I said, check out the other videos. Thanks a lot.